Module 4, Lesson 10, Homework. Number 1, write expressions to match the diagrams, then evaluate. So what I see here is that the whole is labeled as 17 plus 4, and then it's broken into four equal pieces. And we just want to know what this piece is. So I'm going to say that the expression could be, and there are different expressions, that you could use, but I'm going to do 17 plus four. And then if we just wanna know what this one piece is, I'm gonna divide it into four so that I can figure out what just that one part is. So then we need to evaluate. So 17 plus four would be 21 and 21 divided by four. That's equal to 21 fourths and 21 fourths, if we make that into a mixed number, four goes into 21 five times, and we would have one fourth left over. So it would equal five and one fourth. And the next one, so the whole we don't know, but we do know that it's split into four equal pieces, and two of those pieces is equal to four sevenths plus eight thirds. So if I figure out what 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds is, and then I either add another 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds, or I multiply it by 2, then I will have the whole. So I'm going to do 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds times 2. And I'm going to make 4 sevenths plus, I'm going to turn 8 thirds I'm going to make it into a mixed number, 2 and 2 thirds times 2. So now I'm going to add. I need to find the common denominator for 7 and 3. The common denominator would be 21. So up here I'm going to make 4 sevenths into 21st. 7 times 3 is 21, so 4 times 3 is 12. So we have 12 21sts plus 2 thirds is equal to 14 21st, so 2 and 14 21st. So 12 21st plus 14 21st, that's equal to 2 and 26 21st times 2. And if I take 2 and 26 21st, and make that into a mixed number, I would have 3 and 5 21st times 2. And that would be equal to, if we did 3 times 2, I'd have 6, and 5 21st times 2, I'd get 10 21st. Draw a little line to separate those problems there. Number 2. Circle the expressions that give the same product as 6 times 3 eighths. Explain how you know. So we want anything that's equal to 6 and 3 eighths, or 6 times 3 eighths. And so I'm just going to think about 6 times 3 eighths and what other forms it could look like. So if I wanted to solve 6 times 3 eighths, I would write it as 6 times 3 divided by 8, which would then be equal to... 18 eighths, which would then be equal to 2 and 2 eighths, or 2 and 1 fourth. So now let's look through these different expressions and see which ones might match something that we have here. So the first one would be 8 divided by 3 times 6, or 8 divided by 18, but that's not what we have. We have the opposite. We have 18 divided by 8, so that doesn't work. Then we have 3 divided by 8 times 6, and that's not going to work. So let's try 6 times 3 divided by 8. Well, 6 times 3, that'd be 18 divided by 8, which that's what we have right there. So this one does work. The next one, 8 divided by 6. So that would be 8 sixths times 3. But 
that's not what we have. 6 times 8 thirds, um, that doesn't work because we're not multiplying by 8 thirds, we're multiplying by 3 eighths, so that's not going to work. And 3 eighths times 6, this one does work because they've just switched places, so that's saying the this is the commutative property of multiplication, where they can just change places and it'll still be equal to the same thing. Number three, write an expression to match and then evaluate. One eighth the sum of 23 and 17. First, we have one eighth the sum, so the sum of 23 and 17. I know that would mean 23 plus 17, so we're going to need to add those at some point. And then one eighth of that would, I would could either do one eighth times that, or I could put it at the end. Either way would work. So this then if I wanted to solve it, 1 8 times 23 plus 17 is 40. And then that would be equal to 1 times 40 over 8, which is equal to 40 eighths. And 40 eighths is equal to 5. B subtract 4 from 1 6th of 42. So 1 6th of 42, that's going to be, remember, of means times. So 1 6th times 42, and then we want to subtract 4 from that. So minus 4. Now you could put parentheses around here if you want, but you don't necessarily need them because since we're multiplying, we would do that first, whether or not there were parentheses. So 1 6 times 42 would be 1 times 42 over 6, which is equal to 42 6, and 42 6 is equal to 7. So now what we just have is 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. C, 7 times as much as the sum of 1 3rd and 4 fifths. So 7 times the sum, that means we're adding 1 third plus 4 fifths. So we need to find a common denominator for 3 and 5. I'm going to use 15 and convert. So 1 third is equal to 5 fifteenths, and 4 fifths is equal to 12 fifteenths. So we have 7 times. 5 fifteenths plus 12 fifteenths. Or 7 times 17 fifteenths. And now I'm going to need to multiply these together. I draw an arrow. So we'll have 7 times 17 over 15. So 7 times 17 would be 119 fifteenths. And then our last step, we need to divide that. We're running out of room here, so I'm going to erase this. Okay, so 15 can't go into 1, and it can't go into 11, but 15 could go into 119. I'm going to guess, let's see, 15 times 10 would be 150, so that's too big. And 9 would probably also be too big. So I'm going to try 8, 15 times 8. Oh, just a little, one too large, so 120. So it can go in seven times, and seven times 15, if we subtracted 15, would be 105. So 
So we get 7 and 14 fifteenths as our answer. Okay, D. Two thirds of the product of three eighths and sixteen. So two thirds of, so whenever I see of, I'm just going to put a multiplication sign to remind myself that means times. Two thirds times the product of, and product also means times, so we're multiplying two thirds or three eighths and sixteen. So we have two thirds times the product of, which means they want us to do this part first, 3 eighths and 16. So we're taking 2 thirds of that product. So let's first figure out what two, 3 eighths times 16 is. So we have 3 times 8. Nope, that's not what we would have. We would have 3 times 16 over 8. And 3 times 16 is... Forty-eight. So that's 48 eighths, which is 48 divided by 8 is 6. So this part is equal to 6. So what is 2 thirds times 6? We can figure out 2 thirds times 6 by doing, change colors, 2 times 6 over 3, which would be equal to 12 thirds. And 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So this is equal to 4. E, 7 copies of the sum of 8 fifths and 4. So 7 copies of, I would, that would be if you're multiplying. So we're taking, we're making 7 equal copies of the sum, we're adding 8 fifths and 4. So 7 copies of the sum of 8 fifths plus 4. So 8 fifths, I'm going to make that into 1 and 3 fifths plus 4. So we really have 7 times 1 and 3 fifths plus 4 would be 5 and 3 fifths. And then 7 times, I'll break it apart, so 7 times 5 is equal to 35. And 7 times 3 fifths would be equal to 21 fifths. And 21 fifths, 5 can go into 21 four times, and we'd have 1 fifth left over. So if we just add that to 35, we would get... 39 and 1 fifth. And the last one, F. 15 times as much, so 15 times as much as 1 fifth of 12. So again, multiplying. So 30, or not 35, 15 times as much as 1 fifth of 12. So the first thing we want to figure out is one fifth of 12. So I'm going to put those in parentheses so we can do that first. So we'll have one times 12 divided by five, 12 fifths, and that's equal to two and two fifths. So what we have is 15 times two and two fifths. 15 times two would be 30 and 15 times 2 fifths is equal to 15 times 2 over 5, or 30 fifths. And 30 fifths is equal to 6. So 15 times 2 is 30, 15 times 2 fifths is 6. If we add those, 30 plus 6, we get 36. So this is equal to 36. Number 4. Use less than, greater than, or equal to to make true number sentences without calculating. Explain your thinking. So they don't want us to solve here. They just want us to do it without calculating. So 2 thirds times 9 plus 12, is it greater than, less than, or equal to 15 times 2 thirds? So we, they both have 2 thirds. 
we were really comparing 15 and 9 plus 12. Well, 9 plus 12 is equal to 21. So this is 2 thirds times 21, and this is 15 times 2 thirds. So if we multiply by 21, we're going to get something that is greater than if we multiply by 15, since 2 thirds are the same. Those are equal. B, 3 times 5 fourths times 3 fifths, 3 times 5 fourths times 3 eighths. So they both have 3 times 5 fourths, so those are equal. And then we're multiplying by 3 fifths and multiplying by 3 eighths. So here what we need to decide is what's larger, 3 fifths or 3 eighths. Well, 3 fifths is greater than a half. 3 eighths is less than a half. So 3 fifths is greater. And C, 6 times... 2 plus 32 sixteenths. Now 32 sixteenths, that's equal to 32 divided by 16, that's 2. So this is 6 times 2 plus 2 is 4. And here we would have 6 times 2, that is 12 plus 32 sixteenths, that's 2. So what's going to be greater, 6 times 4 or 12 plus 2? Well, 6 times 4 we know is greater than 12 plus 2. Number 5. Fantine bought flour for her bakery each month and recorded the amount in the table to the right. For A through C, write an expression that records the calculation described, then solve to find the missing data in the table. A. She bought 3 fourths of January's total in August. So 3 fourths of January. So January was 3 she bought three-fourths of, so three-fourths of means times three. That would be equal to three times three over four, or nine-fourths. Now nine-fourths is equal to, four goes into nine, two times, and we have one-fourth left over. So just this piece right here is your expression. And then when we solve it, we get two and one-fourth. Part B. She bought seven-eighths as much in April as she did in October and July combined. So seven-eighths as much in April, we don't know April yet, as she did in October and July combined. So what we need to do is add combined October and July, which means we're going to add them. So one and one-fourth plus three-fourths. She bought 7 eighths as much in that, so times 7 eighths. So there's our expression. 1 and 1 fourth plus 3 fourths. 1 fourth plus 3 fourths is 1. So this is, and then we have the whole here. So this is 2 times 7 eighths. And 2 times 7 eighths would be equal to 14 eighths, which is equal to... 8 goes into 14 one time with 6 eighths left over. And if we reduce that, that's 1 and 3 fourths. So what month was that? That was April. April is 1 and 3 fourths. I don't think I filled in August either. August was 2 and 1 fourth. And lastly, we have June. In June, she bought 1 eighth pound less than 3 times as much she bought in May. So May was 9 eighths. So she bought 1 eighth pound less than 3 times as much as 9 eighths. So let's do 3 times 9 eighths and then 1 eighth pound less. So we're going to minus 1 eighth pound. Let's start with 3 times 9 eighths. Eight goes into 27 three times with three left over. And then we just need to subtract one eighth. So three and three eighths minus one eighth would be equal to three and two eighths. And then three and two eighths, we can reduce to three and one fourth. So in June, she used three and one fourth. 
All right, the next one wants us to display a data from the table in a line plot. So let's make it so we can see the data while we're making the line plot. So our data ranges anywhere from the smallest, let's see, I'm going to go first go through, get through, rid of my marks here, whoops. So this was one and three fourths, June was three and one fourth, and August was two and one fourth. I'm going to make anything that isn't already a mixed number into a mixed number. So 9 eighths would be 1 and 1 eighth. 11 fourths, 4 goes into 11 twice, and with 3 left over, so 2 and 3 fourths. Now we need to make our line plot. So the smallest number we have on our list here is, I think, 1 and 1 eighth. Nope, it would be 3 fourths. The largest that we have is 3 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to make our line plot from 0 to 4. And everything is either in fourths or eighths. So I'm going to make everything into eighths. And then I'm going to split everything into eighths. That wasn't good. Okay, so now that I have it drawn, I split everything into eighths. I'm going to start with January. I'm going to make the these a little darker. So I know that's one, two, three, four, and there's our halfway mark. Just to break it up a little bit more. Okay, so January was 3, so I'm going to plot 1x on 3. Then February was a 2. March was 1 and 1 fourth, but we're working with eighths here. So 1 and 1 fourth would be 1 and 2 eighths. So there's 1 and 2 eighths is right there. 1 and 3 fourths for April, that would be 1 and 6 eighths, which is right there. And then May is 1 and 1 eighth. June is 3 and 1 fourth, which is 3 and 2 eighths. July, 1 and 1 fourth, that's another 1 and 2 eighths. August, 2 and 1 fourth, or 2 and 2 eighths. September, 2 and 3 fourths, or 2 and 6 eighths. Oops. And last one, October 3 fourths, which is equal to 6 eighths, right there. Okay, so there's our line plot. And E, how many pounds of flour did Fantine buy from January to October? So anything, we want to know what it is from, add everything from January to October. 
So I'm going to start by making everything into eighths. So three is good, two is good. One and one fourth, that's one and two eighths. One and three fourths, that's one and six eighths. One and one eighth. Three and one fourth is three and two eighths. One and one fourth is one and two eighths. Two and one fourth is two and two eighths. Two and three fourths is two and six eighths. And three fourths would be six eighths. So now I need to add everything together. I'm going to start by looking for things that I can add together and get whole numbers. So I'm going to start with three and two and make that five. And then if I add one and two eighths plus one and six eighths, two eighths plus six eighths, that's going to be one plus the one and the one there would be three. So I've got those down. Let's see if anything else I can add together. Um, I'm going to combine these two because I see the same thing. Two eighths and six eighths would be one plus two plus two would be five. And then I'm also going to add, let's see, one and two eighths and this six eighths, because if I add two eighths and six eighths again, I get, bring it down here, I get one plus one, because the six eighths and two eighths makes one. So that's two. And then the last ones we have to add together would be these two. So we would have four and three eighths. Now I just need to add everything together again. But what I have left here is five plus three plus four and three eighths plus five plus two. So let's see, five plus three is eight. Five plus two is seven. Eight plus seven is 15 plus four and three eighths. And if we add those, we get 19 and three eighths. And so she, you bought 19 and three eighths pounds of flour.